Hello, MLive viewers. Thanks for joining us for our Selection Sunday Breakdown video. I'm Jared Purcell. I'm Greg Wycliffe. And uh, we're here to talk about a lot of the crazy great stuff that came out of Selection Sunday. Uh, there's still a lot of buzz surrounding it, so um, we're going to get right into it by talking about the top 10 matchups that you should watch for. Uh, just uh, a lot of great matchups. Uh, Greg, you want to kick us off with Division 8? Yeah, so in Division A, we got a really good game here to, to uh, start it off. Menden, Menden at, at Reading. Uh, Reading is looking to go back-to-back. -back. Uh, they won the state title last year. And then, uh, you know, the Hornets are a well-respected team. They've got a lot of ton. They got a ton of, of playoff pedigree. And a 3-0 and against Reading. So that'll be an interesting matchup to start right off uh, in Division A for the first round. Sparta at Orchard View is another great one up in uh, Division 4. Uh, Orchard View is undefeated for the first time since 2005. And uh, Sparta's having its best season since 2011 and have won five in a row. And they're going to need that momentum against a team like Orchard View. Uh, moving up to uh, Division uh, 2, we have plenty of matchups there. Uh, uh, you want to talk about this first one here? We got South Line and Fenton. Yeah, this, is my, this matchup is going to definitely bring some firepower. Both teams averaging over 35 points a game. Um, and, uh, you know, seven of uh, Fenton's wins this year have come by two or more scores. So a lot of, a lot of talent on the offensive side. And, you know, in those kind of, kind of games, you know, when you're talking offense, it's usually the, which team has the better defense that comes out with that game. So that'll be another thing to watch for that matchup. Uh, certainly. Um, and then looking at Mona Shores and Midland, uh, you know, the Sailors have a little bit to prove after getting, you know, their lights knocked out by yeah. Muskegon. Um, but, you know, this is still a great team. They have some great players. Caden Broersma, the, the quarterback there, um, had some injury issues at the beginning of the year. But um, they can get rolling, and, uh, you know, they've made runs in the playoffs before, so it won't be surprising to see them do it again. But, you know, the Midland Chemics have always been one of those teams that's up there too. So it's going to be a, a fun matchup to watch to kick off the playoffs for sure. It's unfortunate that one of those teams is going to be eliminated after the first week of the playoffs. Yes. <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, um, we have a pair of 8-1 and one teams uh, playing each other, Farmington and Oak Park. And, uh, you know, Farmington uh, has been a great year for them. They just lost their first game against mm -hmm. uh, North Farmington, their rivals. But um, they're going to look to try and make a statement by trying to knock off Oak Park, who is, I would say, a favorite. Yeah, one of the favorites. <laughs> and they've got a ton of talent, you know, right off the bat with the number one player in the state in Justin Rogers, the K Kentucky commit. And then they've got, you know, the Penn State commit, Enzo Jennings, and then obviously Malik Carr, dynamic athlete, receiver, uh, going to Purdue. So they've got all the talent, and on paper it looks like, you know, they might be the team to beat. Uh, another great matchup in Division Two. It involves actually the defending state champion. It's Warren De La Salle playing at Groves. Uh, De La Salle just squeaked in with a 5-4 and four record, um, but, you know, they play in the Catholic League Central Division. A lot of great opponents on their schedule. They're definitely battle-tested. Um, you just recently saw De La Salle play. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. They, they played West Bloomfield. They only lost 16-8. to eight. Uh, They actually had a chance to drive down and tie it, but uh, had a turnover there in the final minute. But that team, you know, they, they, play, they play some really, really tough squads. I mean, when you consider the Catholic League, mm -hmm. consider West Bloomfield, they played Muskegon earlier. So yes. they are a battle-tested team. They've won back-to-back -back state championships. So they have... The pedigree, and I know, uh, you know, their coach Mike Gion. He said that he uh, he felt like there were some people that didn't want them to get in this year, and um, I think he kind of feels that way because of the all the experience that, that they have, and that <laughs> if they get in, they could possibly make yeah. a run. I mean, so, they do have a signature win against Davison. And yeah, I remember our colleague Brendan Savage saying that uh, they were the best four and three team in the state mm -hmm. at the time after they got that victory, and uh, it's not surprising because what Davidson has one of the best offenses in the country and they completely shut or in the state I should say yeah. and they completely shut them down yeah so. I think at the time Davidson was the, the the top scoring offense and right you know they put up a goose egg against De La Salle so that team is, is definitely going to be a team to watch in, in division two and don't let the record fool you for them for sure um, let's look at some division one matchups we have Rochester Adams at Utica Eisenhower uh, this is a great matchup of Teams from the top divisions, uh, Rochester Adams from the top division of the OAA Red, Eisenhower from the top division of the MAC, the MAC Red, uh, both 7-2, and two, uh, both kind of living in the shadows of some good teams in those conferences. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I like Rochester Adams. Uh, Anthony Petrito uh, is a great running back um, who not only can run the ball, but also has good hands to catch the ball. He's put up, I think, over 1,000 total yards of offense. 
uh, so far this year. So he's definitely going to be one to watch. Eisenhower um, always has a solid defense. Uh, they've been playing teams pretty close. Obviously, they ran into a team like Chippewa Valley. Um, but, you know, uh, they, they, they've been looking great. And Eisenhower's a proud program trying to get that, uh, that winning tradition back. Uh, moving on to Davison at Romeo, uh, we got Flint versus uh, Macomb area. Another matchup of seven and two teams. Uh, talk about that offense a little more for Davis in there. Yeah, the Cardinals uh, have one of the better offenses, as mentioned. Uh, they've scored over 400 points this season. Um, you know, they've got a great quarterback, great receivers, you know, just a dynamic offense, and they can put up points with the best of them. And then Romeo, you know, the, their only two losses have come, come against Chippewa Valley and Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, these are two teams that are also battle-tested that, that can both score the ball and It'll be the first time that these teams meet each other, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Yeah, that Romeo at Chippewa Valley game was one of the best games I saw all season. Um, I know the coach was saying they felt like they could have won that game. Both both teams had a chance to win that game. So Romeo, I think, is going in with a chip on their shoulder, looking to have something to prove. I mean, they won a state championship not too long ago also, so uh, they're, they're looking to be taken seriously going into the playoffs. Uh, a great team. We got a team from your area here. Yeah. Uh, we have Celine traveling to face Belleville, and uh, Celine has won eight in a row. Belleville's undefeated. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Celine's chances here? Yeah, well, Celine, they're they're a really good team. Like you said, they they won eight in a row. The only loss coming to Chippewa Valley. Seems like a lot of teams their only loss is to Chippewa Valley. So that says a lot, you know, when they're playing a team like that. But uh, you know, for the Hornets. They've got a, a new starting quarterback, sophomore Larry Robinson, who's really dynamic. Uh, he's just come in at, in a few games here, and he's just kind of sparked the offense. You know, he's a dual threat guy who can throw and run, and uh, they've got a great running back in Cade Gillis. But, you know, playing against a team like Belleville with mm -hmm. so much talent, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And on the road, it's going to be a hard game for them to get, to, get, to get through. Yeah, Belleville's just such an explosive team. Uh, we were talking about that with coach after his game against Plymouth in week nine here, and he was saying that, you know, explosive players um, make explosive plays. Mm -hmm. And Belleville's one of those teams where, you know, they might not do much for a drive or two, and all of a sudden they just break off a big play. Their quarterback, Christian Du Reed, is uh, only a junior, and he's in his third year with starting experience. I think he split some time as a freshman, as a starter, but he's uh, he, he's got that um, gamer mentality. When it gets to crunch time, he seems to always step up. He can break off a big run occasionally. He's not always uh, a dual threat guy, but when he does run, you have to account for him. And Belleville, of course, with all their talent, one of the favorites. They got a mission commit and Andre Selden. Just so many uh, Division One talented players. So uh, expect to see a lot of those guys playing in college one day. Uh, that'd be a good game to catch uh, if you're in the area. Um, and then looking at the defending champs, uh, they, they get a rematch, uh, Chippewa Valley against uh, Macomb, Dakota. Uh, Macomb, Dakota got in at five and four, but they've been playing some guys pretty close, and they also played Chippewa Valley close. Talk about that, you were at that game. Yeah, I was at that game, and uh, you know, Macomb, Dakota nearly pulled that one off. You know, they, they got right down to the red zone, third down, they drop a touchdown pass that, you know, all but certainly would have sealed it for them, and then on fourth down, their, their pass, you know, falls to the ground and, and they lose a heartbreaker on the road. Uh, now, this game was interesting because Chippewa Valley had a really, they had a big lead, 14-0, and it looked like they were gonna run away with it. Yeah. But the Cougars kind of battled back and, and they're also a battle-tested team. They're going right back to Chippewa Valley. They haven't won in about seven or eight meetings, so it'll be interesting to see that game and will Chippewa Valley be focused enough or will they think about, oh, we've already beaten this team, we're probably going to get through it. So it'll be interesting to see uh, you know, how, that, how, how that one turns out. And going off of that, um, you know, Macomb, Dakota being one of the 5-4 and four teams, we talked about De La Salle being a 5-4 and four team. 54 schools this year, uh, setting a brand new record, got in with either a 5-4 and four record, uh, a 4-4 four and four record, or a 4-3 record. And uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is, is, is it a little bit... Uh, I guess telling of how the season went for some schools. Do you have any? Uh... I think for me, it's just a lot of parity at this mm -hmm. point. You know, a lot of teams uh, that are getting in at five and four, they don't have bad losses. It's just that they played good opponents, and everyone's kind of beating up on each other. And then you get to that point where you know you have to put some of these teams in, and uh, and there are some teams that are five and four that have have some shots to make some runs here. 
So um, it's a good thing, I, I believe, that you know you're you're giving teams an opportunity to make a statement here. And uh, even though the, the records might not show that they're a great team, there are some squads out there that could do some damage. Yeah, you know, one of those five four teams, obviously, De La Salle, the defending Division Two champion. Great schedule, battle tested. They have a shot. I mean, it's it's not going to be easy, of course, but they definitely have a shot. And when you, when you've played guys like you know Muskegon, um, and you know. The West Catholic Bloomfield. Centrals, the Orchard Lake, St. Yeah. Mary's, the Brother Rice's, West Bloomfield. Um, how can you not be ready for the postseason at that point? So um, at, at this point, I feel like they know who they are. Um, they're going to start believing themselves. Uh, they can beat anybody at this point. But, uh, you know, it's the playoffs. You can lose to anybody at any time yeah. if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. uh, another one of those teams that uh, got in at 5-4 and four that we didn't really expect to be at this point at the beginning of the year was Cast Tech. Um, there was a point where it seemed like they weren't even going to make the playoffs. I believe they were two and four at one point, um, but they managed to win out and go into a five and four record heading into the postseason. They beat Clarkston, which another team that didn't make the playoffs this year after being in the Division One finals what two years in a row. So, um, but Cast Tech, that's a team that uh, I don't think anyone wants to face um, in their first matchup. Uh, they, they've matched up with Gross Point South, which I think is going to be a great game. Uh, Cast Tech being the 5-4 and four team will be traveling to South, and then the winner of that game will have to pay, face a great Dearborn Fordson team. Yeah. Everybody remembers how Fordson uh, stomped Cast Tech last year. Um, so I think Cast Tech would be very motivated to get past this first game against South to have a rematch opportunity against Fordson. But, um, you know, it's, it's just going to be a little more wide open, I think, this year in Division One, especially with, you know, the schools like, you know, Cast Tech coming in under the radar and Clarkson not even being there. So... Um, another good school to watch out for would be uh, Lake Orion, too. Uh, that was the school that won the OAA Red. Um, and speaking of championship chances, there's going to be some divisions with new champions, and not necessarily because the defending champion didn't make the playoffs. They, yeah. They've changed divisions. <laughs> um, uh, one, obviously, is Detroit Martin Luther King, uh, just a very talented squad. They're going to be a favorite uh, in Division Two this year. Um, they got a pretty difficult district, um, but... Moving up from Division Three, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be as much of a breeze this time. But they're they're obviously favored. They're going to have to try and get past Bedford to begin with. Um, Roosevelt has had a solid season. Livonia Franklin has Jake Kelbert at quarterback. He's great. So that district's going to be really good. Um, and then uh, we have Edwardsburg moving up from four to three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both uh, actually Edwardsburg and, and Chelsea, Chelsea. Yeah, both moving up uh, to Division three, which uh, obviously I don't think that they're they're probably not too happy about just considering the, the amount of talent in Division three. Uh, both of those teams are looking to get back to the state championships. So it's going to be a lot harder this year uh, moving up a division for both of those schools. Was Chelsea's coach expecting to be up in uh, Division three this year? I think they, they I okay. think that they knew that there, there was an. Uh, a, a possibility for it. I think his guys are prepared for it. I mean, Chelsea's a really good team. Um, they've got some really good guys. Kyle Knight, Brennan Van Ripper at running back. They've got some good skill position guys and their defense is actually, they've actually had one of the better defenses in, in the state. They've allowed less than 100 points this season, mm -hmm. um, had four or five shutouts. So Chelsea's a, is is a team that you, you should watch for in Division Three. Yeah, so it'll be two brand new teams in the uh Division Four final this year because of that Edwardsburg, of course, won that matchup against Chelsea last year, uh, and then we have Hudsonville Unity Christian, uh, no longer in Division Five, uh, moving up to Division Four. Uh, so that certainly changes things. They could be one of those teams filling that slot left behind yeah. by <laughs> Edwardsburg and Chelsea. Um, uh, another talented squad there, uh, heading into the playoffs with a good record. Uh, they're at six and three. They play some good teams. Uh, but they got to get through the, the Christians of Grand Rapids. You got South Christian and Grand Rapids Christian, both in their uh, in their district. So, and then Jackson Lumen Christie, another state champion that's not in its division from last year. They won in D six, and now they're in D seven. Um, any thoughts on what you think D seven will look like this year? It's going to be interesting uh, with Lumen Christie moving moving down, and then New Lothrop still there. They're the defending champs in, in Division Seven, so something's got to give there. Obviously, Lumen Christie, you know, they have that championship pedigree, won three straight state championships, and New Lothrop being a, a defending champ. Uh, so that 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 division will be fun if, if both of those teams can meet up. Yeah, and the, Puama Westphalia is there too. Yeah, you got you got to <laughs> consider Puama Westphalia as well. So that could be man. Yeah, I, I really like the Division Seven setup. Uh, 
I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously we can't forget about eight-man football as well. Um, Morris is back in uh, Division One eight-man, and they have an eight-one record. And uh, what did you tell me about Division Two eight-man? Yeah, so I've, I've been hearing some some rumblings up north that Hillman's a team to look out for in Division Two. Uh, they're eight and one this year, and they they've got some firepower and, and could make a run. And also Powers North Central, who's a one seed uh, as well in in, the, in uh, Division Two. So, uh, any particular division that you're the most interested in? I would have to say probably uh, between uh, Division One and, and Division Seven. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Division Seven with. You know, New Lothrop and, and Lumen Christie possibly meeting up in, in the state championship. That would be an awesome, awesome matchup. And then Division One, it's so wide open that, right. you know, you don't know, uh, can Chippewa Valley keep this winning streak going? It's getting to that point where, you know, it, it gets tougher every week. You know, people are patting you on the back. You're undefeated. You've won 20-plus games, feeling good about yourself. And then, you know, they've got to watch out because they've got a tough matchup right. in, their, in their first game. And there are a lot of teams, Lapeer, Lake Orion, Rockford on the west side, they're a good team. Mm -hmm. Belleville, Celine, I mean, there's so many, so many teams in Division One that could that could make a run and uh, get get to the state finals. Yeah, uh, I'm going to echo what you said on Division One. I. I love how wide open it is. Um, I guess we'll see if that remains true. Maybe someone will steamroll through the competition, but I, I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. I, I see it's going to be a difficult road for any team that gets to the state championship. Um, I mean, gosh, when you have you know teams like Belleville and uh, Chippewa Valley and West Bloomfield, all in separate parts of the bracket. Yeah. You wonder what's going to happen there. So uh, we're definitely going to have some great uh, late playoff matchups in Division One. And, you know, being biased, uh, I also like Division Two. You know, Division One, Division Two are filled with Metro Detroit area teams, and uh, that's my bread and butter. But uh, I, I love uh, the idea of uh, Oak Park and Detroit King meeting up in a region mm -hmm. final. That would be really cool to see. Um, you know, going back to that De La Salle Groves matchup, I think the winner of that could uh, win their region. Yeah. So they'll, they'll win the next two games, I believe. I think they'll be favored uh, in both of those. Uh, and then the west side of the state, uh, you never know who's going to come out of Division Two for that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a lot of cool things. And Wald Lake Western is probably the top favorite outside of um, the, North, the Oak Park and uh, King region. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens there. And I mean, obviously, we would be remiss without mentioning Division Three, you know, Muskegon, mm -hmm. top ranked team in, in, the, in the country, uh, the number one team in the state. They've pretty much manhandled some really good teams De La Salle, King, Mona Shores. They've got Cameron Martinez, the Ohio State. Oh, Canadian. that's his name. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, obviously, they're, they're looking for revenge after losing in the state finals last season. So, I mean, that Division Three is going to be interesting to see uh, if, if they can get through and then whoever on the uh, other side comes over there to yeah. meet them in, the, in that state final. Yeah, watch out for Orchard Lake St. Mary's in D3-2. But, man, I saw Muskegon at the beginning of the year, and they manhandled Detroit King. Yeah. And Cameron Martinez looked outstanding. I also watched them against uh, De La Salle in the opening game of the season, and they manhandled them <laughs> as well. It doesn't seem like anybody can really touch – uh, Muskegon once they get going because Karen Martinez is just an outstanding player. The Ohio State commit is obviously we all know him as the returning Michigan High School Football Player of the Year. He won it as a junior, the first junior to ever win the award. Mm -hmm. And he's back this year and uh, just today uh, Evan Live announced the top 10 selections for Michigan High School Football Player of the Year. Uh, obviously Cameron Martinez has made the finalists again uh, but going through the list we have Tyler Amos from Portage Northern. We have Kobe Clark from Schoolcraft. We have Myron Harris, the great running back from Chippewa Valley. Uh, Tristan Hines, he's had a great dual threat year for Milan. He seems to get better every year. Yeah, every year. Um, Jacob Kelbert, another great dual threat quarterback from Livonia Franklin. He took them to the state championship as a sophomore. Uh, Cameron Martinez, we have Leroy Quinn, another Muskegon area guy who was a great two-way player. Mm -hmm. um, excellent on both sides of the ball. Uh, Brendan Sullivan, obviously leading the, the high-octane offense of Davison. Zach Trainer, who was only a junior in his first year starting at Wald Lake Western. He did start as a freshman at Brighton. Transferred, didn't start last year, starting again this year. Completing 72% of his passes throughout the season so far. That's, that's really impressive. And then Abdur, Abdur Rahman Yassin, uh, what a great wide receiver. Uh, he's heading to Northwestern. Almost didn't play this year. Yeah. Um, MHSA actually ruled him ineligible because of um, saying he took too many uh, credits toward his um, his high school diploma, 
but um, they overturned the decision just before the season started. And he's one of the best wide receivers, one of the yeah. best athletes, I think, in the, in in the, the state. In the entire state, yeah. So um, check out that information. There's a lot more on MLive.com about not only Michigan High School Football Player of the Year, but, of course, we have all the Selection Sunday recap. We have brackets, top matchups. Um, look for your local coverage of what the matchups are. Uh, everything that you need for high school football is going to be on MLive.com. Uh, thanks for joining us. Once again, I'm Jared Purcell. And I'm Greg Wycliffe. And uh, you guys enjoy the football playoffs.